and you realize no matter how much good you are trying to do to members of an extended family, to whoever, it looks like you are always hitting a brick wall. Mm. So I had to sit down with me and ask myself, what should I do? Because many times uh, I started off crying, mm. but then I remembered what my mother did to us when we did something that she knew she had told us we shouldn't do. She would tell you, dig up um, a little hole in the sand, spit into it, bury the spit, and confess that you will never do that again. So I did that for myself, and I said, I will never allow anybody to make me cry. Mm. From now on, I'm going to make other people cry. I also was motivated, you know, there is a prayer, a serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. Grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Mm -hmm. Courage to change those that I can mm -hmm. and wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. So I sat down with me and I said, God has not given me a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be afraid of people. Any fear that is beginning to creep into me is coming from a source other than God. So I started to reject it. And I realized that God has given me a mind that I can reason things, which was almost like a permission denied to women to reason out things. We grew up hearing, ah, you think like a man. And mm. for me, that was not a compliment. It was really a huge insult. Why can't I think like me? Why do I have to think like a man? Mm. Why do I have to think like somebody else? Why should a, a good idea be associated with anybody else other than me? Wow. So I didn't want that. I fought that and I challenged that. And I knew at first I would fight people. I would not separate between the being and the thing that they are doing. I'll fight a, as if it's the individual until I sat down and I said, okay, what is within my power to change? Mm -hmm. What is not within my power to change? I took hold of what was in my power to change. The first of which was my mind. I can think out, and if I think, and if I want it, if I desire it, nothing should be, uh, should not permit me not to have it, except if I give it up. Mm. So that's the attitude and the stance that I took. And I had read a book uh, by John Elmerson, An Enemy Called Average, and it so resonated with me because I never wanted average. I never wanted even the church uniforms that made us be at the same average because I had heard my grandmother saying, no, you can't wear stockings with that church uniform. I can't wear And I said, why? No, because we'll make other people who are poor feel bad. So <laughs> that was the attitude. Uh, it shocked me, but as I reasoned this out, I said, why should I make somebody poor feel comfortable in their, why should I bring them Mm. myself to their level in order for them to feel comfortable. Mm. Why don't I bring them up? Mm -hmm. So that's the attitude that I then said to myself, you know what, some problems I cannot solve them, but I can decide them. Mm. And once I decide whether there is a barrier, I can run over it. Whether there is a troop, I can run through it. And mm. I was also very much empowered by my faith, I mm. believe in the Bible. I believe in things that uh, uh, the Word of God says about me. And one of the things that really strengthened me at that formative stage of my adulthood, I was actually in my late 20, mid to late 20s and early 30s when I was experiencing all these things and making all these decisions for myself.